You're watching Telecom TV's exclusive coverage of the Wi-Fi Global Congress event from London. And I'm joined now by Chris Penrose, who is Senior Vice President of IoT Solutions at AT&T Mobility. Chris, thanks for talking to us on Telecom TV. Glad to be here today. Can I ask you first, what would you say are the main challenges that are facing the Wi-Fi industry today? I think you're seeing a lot of different technologies continue to emerge, particularly as we talk about moving toward the Internet of Things. And, and, and so the, the role that Wi-Fi can play is a, is a huge role. Uh, but what I think is going to be really important is how, do, how does it tie off with all the other different technologies that are there so that can seamlessly work uh, for customers and businesses. So you really don't have to worry about what is the technology. It's really about am I getting connected and, am I, and I'm able to do what I want to do with my services. I mean, you mentioned the different technologies there. When it comes to connecting IoT devices, you, you've got everything, haven't you? From, from the high bandwidth requirements, you've got the very low power, ultra low power requirements. So, so where does, does Wi-Fi have a specific role, specific niche for a certain type of IoT device? So I think uh, you should look at it, I think it's based upon the use case as well as as well as the environment that it's in. If, if something is uh, moving rapidly, you know, obviously, uh, you know, in moving across uh, different locations, then obviously a cellular s a solution is going to be better in those environments. But if something is static and, and staying in a single place, uh, then, you know, and is going to be there on a re repetitive basis, then I think Wi-Fi is a really good solution in that environment. Uh, and, and again, I think you've got, you know, different cost curves associated and, and, and different uh, power uh, associated with different technologies. And and depending upon if you have constant power, the ability to recharge uh, versus not, then I think different solutions play out better for uh, different, uh, different opportunities. And what are you doing as, as AT&T? How, how, how are you uh, addressing the, the emerging IoT market? Yeah, so at AT&T, we've got a dedicated organization completely focused on how we connect everything up around the world uh, that's not a smartphone or a tablet, uh, and, and how do we really transform the way that these things are going to be talking uh, both to each other as well as to people. Uh, and, you know, we really look at how can we provide a service that, you know, really takes it away from the customer worrying about what is the type of connectivity and really what am I getting in the, in the way of actual functionality uh, that I can use. And, and so we've got a lot of efforts going on in the connected car, uh, where we're putting con connectivity in the vehicles. We've got our uh, digital life and our uh, connected home efforts. And we're even tying those off nicely together so that the car can talk to the home, uh, wearables can talk to the home in the car, and, and we're doing a ton on the industrial side of things too. And so, so we really are, are, are putting together connectivity services and then platforms that ride on top of the connectivity to offer up complete end-to-end -end solutions for our business partners around the world. Some of these solutions um, use cellular, some use Wi-Fi, you've got, you've got license, you've got unlicensed. It's a, it's a bit of a contentious topic here at the, the event in London this week, this, this coexistence of the two. What's at and strategy for, for looking at license and, and unlicensed together? Yeah, so I think at and is always looking at all the different network technologies that are out there. We're doing trials to see which standards and which solutions that we think are going to be best served in the marketplace. Uh, and, and again, I think it's going to be continuing to look at what are those use cases, where does it make the most sense uh, to be able to deploy the different type of network technologies. But Again, remove it for the end customer. They don't. They're not really caring if it's licensed or unlicensed, uh, you know, or you know, really, they just want it to work. And that, and that's where we're really focused on is how do we how do we offer tools where businesses can manage across a number of different network technologies, uh, be able to extract the information off those endpoints, and be able to take action against that. And that's where AT and T is really focused. Are the security and authentication issues sufficiently mature um, to support the, 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 the vast number of IoT devices that we're going to be seeing in the next few years? I think uh, security is going to be a huge focus point as we go forward. On, in order to really unlock the true potential of IoT, we have to make sure that the devices are secure and the network is secure. at and is doing a lot in the space to bring security solutions to the marketplace so that we can actually offer up uh, you know, the most secure and robust uh, you know, ways to connect. Uh, but it's a continuous uh, uh, battle as we add more and more devices on, onto, the, onto this ultimate network, we're going to have to stay vigilant and, and stay in front of it. And of course, we're looking at billions of devices over, over the next, next, next five years or so. Um, a lot of devices that we're seeing at the moment are, are very low cost and you know, keep the cost down, make it cheap. That means low cost components and also not all manufacturers are going through the, the paid for certification process. So for service providers, you know, how do you ensure that all these devices that, that come onto your network don't mess up the network and actually perform as they should? 
Yeah, so it's going to, again, be a continuous challenge to make sure we have a, a robust certification process. We try to drive and make it very simple for people to bring devices to us to certify those on our networks uh, and, and provide lots of tools to be able to get through that process. We pre-certify uh, modules that you know, we know work well on the network, and we encourage people to, to use those to expedite the process. But, but uh, you know, as more and more devices are coming on and as they're using non-cellular technologies, uh, we're going to have to, again, be able to look at the traffic and look at what's happening with those uh, to make sure that they're not interfering or causing any harm to the network. And final question for you, how should the WBA be, be uh, continuing to, to support the industry? So I think WBA has done a, a really great job, you know, really pulling together uh, folks to, to move the business forward. And, and I think as we begin to look at all the different technologies, I think how, to, how can WBA help broker across you know, wireless, low power, all the other different technologies that are out there to make it, again, seamless uh, and just work for that end customer and for those businesses. And, and I think that's a big role that the WBA can play and really drive this IoT industry forward. Great. Chris, thank you very much indeed. All right. Thank you very much.